They're the country's most remote police force. You can be 250 kilometres from the nearest uh, anything. Let's rock and roll. Patrolling over a million square kilometres of the world's most unforgiving landscape in Australia's toughest conditions. The weather here is beautiful. They keep the peace. It looks like it's starting to get out of control. Without losing their cool. Just doing our job. Territory cops. Oh, let's go. Tonight. Come to the front door and open it now. Chasing down a serial car thief. Just done the bolt from a stolen car. But the biggest challenge, not getting eaten. Let's get your license available, mate. An early morning RBT. It's just unbelievable. Leaves police scratching their heads. It's one of those only the territory moments. And chaos and confusion at the kebab shop. I didn't say nothing, my boyfriend didn't say nothing. I was like, what the f are you doing standing here next to me and your boyfriend's over there talking shit, Bill? For cops like Seamus Christy Johnston, being called tough comes with the territory. But call him pretty, well, that's a whole different story. My nickname, I've never had the nickname Pretty Boy in my entire life. Who's winning? Is it Pretty Boy? I've got a sneaking suspicion that it might have been the boss who's throwing that one out there. I think he's just trying to stitch me up. I know the territory well. I consider myself a local. I've been here for 17 years. Pliny, can you make an assessment? If you've got enough units, move in and make the arrest. Policing is addictive. Boom! I live it and I breathe it, and I think that's one of my strengths. Once I've got a target, I won't stop until I've got them. Negative. Do not let him get back in the car. Ray, give me a better location. Through here. I just love it. I love the thrill of the chase. Let's rock and roll. And today's case might just give this thrill seeker another hit. Seamus teaming up with Steve Flynn is being called to check out a torch car in remote bushland just outside of Darwin. Three weeks ago, there was a military family that had their house broken into. Um, they had their brand new Nissan Navara utility stolen. That hasn't been seen since. Now, as a result, they've gone and hired a, a car, this Holden Commodore. Two weeks later, the offenders have broken back into their house and stolen this car. You can see the number plate down here. The last two letters match up. Kilo Foxtrot. They've set it ablaze. It's completely destroyed. Pretty frustrating, though. Have your car stolen, and then two weeks later, they break back in and steal the hire car. The good news is the guilty party doesn't seem to be the brightest spark. They've stolen uh, purse and credit cards. They've used that credit card at about five different businesses around Darwin. Now, we've gone and got the CCTV footage of the offenders using the credit card. We released it to the media to try and identify the person. But we've had a Crime Stoppers report identifying the person on the CCTV footage. That person is Frank Ingram. He's only recently been released from prison for robbery. Um, he's been in and out of jail all his life. We don't have a current residential address for him. We're going to monitor his current girlfriend. Once we do have a, an address, we're going to execute a search warrant at the location, and then from there we'll move in and make the arrest. Mitchell Street, Party Central, Darwin. Sergeant Drew Slape and Constable Lachlan Sevior are about to get a taste of local culture in a kebab shop. What the hell is going on? Shoot through! Shoot! Hands down. The footwear is flying, but the city safe team arrive too late to see what's happened. I've been a police officer for uh, almost 10 years, and I'm still learning every day about the best way to approach situations. What's going on? Come over in the corner over here. When we first arrived, the scene was aggressive, it was hostile. There was obviously a lot of tension in the air, a propensity for violence, which was already in swing. Do you know who she is? No idea who that woman is. No idea? It shouldn't be too hard to get an accurate picture, should it? Don't spew in here. Come outside. This young lady, Shana, is assisting police with their inquiries. For Drew, in situations like this, patience isn't just a virtue, it's vital. Calm down, calm down, OK? Do you have a phone number, mate? Uh, I don't know my number, sorry. Do you have my phone number? 04. Nine, nine. Double nine. Again, one, three, zero. There's too many numbers in there. I don't know my number, sorry. 
And it's 11 numbers. Do you have your phone on you with that number saved now? Getting this girl's phone number is tricky enough. Getting the story straight is near impossible. I literally walked in about two bottles out of the fridge to buy him the white shirt. He's like, oh, what the f are you slats doing in here? I turn around and say, excuse me. So do you know him? No. OK. <laughs> I find the easiest way to deal with people is you go in at the lowest level. You're a hero, mate. No, just ignore him. He's, he's a, a hero. Yeah, he's a fool. You be um, direct um, because people often need direction from police officers. He said something to the lady and then she's just... Dude, come on, man. I need to find out what's going on. Because they're often highly emotional. And then his girlfriend started saying something, so I turned around and I said, you need to shut your mouth and stop getting cheeky before you get hit. Sometimes irrational. The girl there stood up, grabbed me around the neck. Elbowed her, and then my friend's got up and grabbed her, and I just started punching her. This is your current address. <laughs> Young Shana's on a roll, and she's only just getting started. Seamus and Flinny are on the hunt for two stolen cars. One of them's been found torched in bushland. They've set it ablaze, it's completely destroyed. And now it's game on to find the second. What about the other one that's still outstanding? Do you have any ideas where it might be? Yeah, you know, look, there's been a lot of cars that have been coming up at the quarry there. So what if we get a hold of the water police and see if the divers want to do an operation there? Yeah, look, I reckon they'd be keen. Yeah. The normal procedure for the people that are doing what they're doing is to have their fun and then uh, push the cars over the edge of the quarry down there. However, here at the top end, things are never as simple as they seem. In the past, it has been known, especially at this time of year, once crocs are on the move, there has been crocodiles in the area. Crocodiles pose a huge risk to anyone going in the water. Um, and if there's a risk that there's a, a good saltwater crocodile in there or anywhere that we can't find, uh, we just won't dive. They're as big as six metres. Um, and they're in the area. We know they're there. So the cops aren't taking any chances. You know, grab me that darn bait, that pig bait. Local croc whisperer, Tommy Nichols, who lost two fingers to a rogue croc a few years ago, helped set the trap. You can never guarantee anything because crocodiles are like humans. You know what they're capable of doing, but you never know what they're going to do next. It's a waiting game to see whether one of these monsters takes the bait. Back in Mitchell Street, Drew and the City Safe team are still trying to bring peace to the kebab shop. Wait, all he tried to do was stop her from hitting my girlfriend. That's all. Yeah. That's so she started on you first? And she got up and stopped me, walked up to the counter like a big man here, right? Go away. You're in a public place, you're drunk, you can't control yourself. Go away. He's a jerk, mate. Unfortunately, I find that the longer police stand still, Especially with the fluoro vest, we seem to be a target for fools. Hey, Mum, I'm on TV. Not that there are any fools at the kebab shop, of course. I was like, seriously, go away, because you've got nothing to do with this. Push one, push the other, and then they got me, and then all three. And then she grabbed me around, around the neck because I went up to her boyfriend. I was like, shut your f***ing mouth. And then I'm down here, and then hit me. Excuse me, I didn't say nothing. My boyfriend didn't say nothing. I was like, well, what the f*** are you doing standing here next to me and your boyfriend's over there talking shit, Phil? Why do you got to get up when your boyfriend's sitting there talking shit to girls? Yeah, she's chopping shoes. Right. No, just wait here for me, please. Time for the cops to compare notes and for Shana to entertain her newfound audience. So the, the lady in the bin that's outside, she, she came in. Any location where you have a group of people congregating, you've got an increased risk of there being conflict. So which one is the one who started fighting with you? Out the front of licensed premises, um, dining venues, uh, and taxi ranks. They're the three big ones. That's yours? My other one in there? Yeah, I'll have a look. Nice high heels, right? Very nice. Very nice. Along with me. For Drew, there are some mysteries that just can't be solved. They've said you've started the fight. Just listen, just listen. You've said that they've started the fight, so we've got a conflicting version of events, OK? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a reference number. When you're sober, if you want to make a complaint of assault or anything like that, you can come into the station, quote that number, and we will follow up accordingly. OK? OK? Thank you. No worries. And out of all the chaos and confusion, a moment of clarity. I got punched in the face. Hey, oh, that's the one chick that did it. One, two, 
three. Seamus and Mark Tazzoni are travelling to a local quarry searching for a stolen car. Oh man, there's no doubt that car thieves are throughout Darwin. We probably have cars stolen every single night and yeah, it's just a never-ending battle. But I mean, we're not going to give up, it's our job. The dive unit has called for backup from local croc expert Tommy Nichols. I can't say that I've got too many phobias, but crocodiles is definitely one. We've been to jobs where people have been taken by crocs and then seen the bodies where they've been cut out and it's not pretty and it yeah, definitely puts the fear into you. Senior Constable Rowan Wake heads up the dive team. Uh, we've got crocodiles in the water up here that grow well in excess of five to six metres. It's risk versus reward, I guess. So I'm very confident that simply because of the fact that there's been no crocodiles in that trap, there's also no crocodiles uh, in this waterway. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Obviously down there there's, there's no coral reef, there's no Nemo. It's uh, fairly unpleasant down there. Even your partner can't see what you're doing. It's not long before they snag their first catch of the day. Yeah, it's stolen. Yeah, definitely stolen. Definitely stolen. Yeah, definitely stolen. Still no sign of the missing missing, but could this discovery be the breakthrough? How'd you go? Morning, how are you? Oh, good. 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 Senior Constable Sarah Hutchison may not be a Territorian. I'm not from the Territory. I'm one of these blow-ins from down south but she's taken to it like a crock of water. I came up in about 2009 to pursue my teaching career and quickly went from teaching into policing. I love the outdoor laid back lifestyle. I love the fact that when it's winter in Victoria, um, it's 30 degrees and blue skies here in the Territory. I'd heard some uh, negative things about the Territory and that it's, you know, a little bit backward. To a certain extent, that's true, but um, the opportunities here are just brilliant. On a sweltering 35 degree morning, Hutchie has a surprise for the early birds on their way to work. Time is uh, 7 a.m., so we're out here fairly early. I don't think people will be expecting to see us out here at this time, especially for random breakfasting. Just get your license available, mate. Like policing, it's just to expect the unexpected, so who knows what we're going to find this morning. And with classic Territorian flair, there's a stubby holder for those who haven't had a drink. Throughout this RBT, we'll be issuing Sober Bob stubby coolers and also sunglasses from um, Party Safe Group. So we'll be all good, so you can, they look very classy. All right, Jack, I'll just get you to turn your car off, get you to jump out. Immediately, the team starts finding cars. The grey Navara. And drivers. It appears that his vehicle's unregistered. That shouldn't be on the road, like this bloke. Just stay upstairs, Who's blown over on his way to work after a few beers last night. Have been gone last night? Oh, I had a few. Oh, well, over half a dozen. It would be more like a dozen. He's one of those drivers who had a big night the night before and woke up this morning thinking that he was under the limit when he was by far not under the limit. It's not a good start to the morning, not for the NT public. Uh, we're hoping that this uh, slows down a little bit throughout the morning. And just as there's a glimmer of hope, Hutchie stumbles across a driver making a conspicuous effort to get himself arrested. That's just unbelievable. It's wooden. Wood. I've never seen anything like it. Back at the quarry, the dive team have found a possible clue. How'd you go? It's a licence plate from a stolen car. Yeah, it's stolen. Definitely stolen? Definitely stolen. Yeah. Just not the one they're after. But that night, the elusive Frank Ingram blows his cover. Seamus and the team get ready to strike. Residence in Muirhead has been broken into twice in the last three weeks. On each occasion, the offenders have stolen a motor vehicle. So the tally at the moment is uh, two vehicles stolen. We've recovered one burnt out. The other one is still outstanding. Frank Ingram has been identified as one of the offenders. Uh, he was captured on CCTV footage in one of the stolen cars, and he was using a stolen credit card. He's got some serious explaining to do. 
When you're chasing someone for an extended period of time, you sort of have to start thinking the way they do. A lot of these guys are actively avoiding police, so I'll do my best to get him locked up and put in prison. 107, radio check. With senior constable Jennifer Pocock at the wheel, the team head out with two search warrants. Jen and I have worked together since we were like 20 years old. Fight all the time, but when the job's on, we usually get it done pretty well. Oh, I'm in the presence of greatness, what can I say? <laughs> I'm just going to sit in the back seat and take it all in. Maybe one day I'll be as good as them. Hey, mate, don't hate Maybe us because you ain't us. Maybe not. They hit target one. Frank's girlfriend's house. Police, come to the front door and open it now. We're looking for Frank. Clear. Oh, my goodness. What's he done? Unless he's joined Australia Post, there you go. Frank has more hey. explaining to do. Seamus? Yes? Hey. Is that which person? They're all different people. We've located a number of letters that we think might be stolen. Uh, they're in the names of probably ten different people, so we're going to seize those items as well. And there's more. I found the shoes. I believe those, they're the identical to the footage. The shoes match footage of Frank in a service station using the stolen cards. The cops are closing in. We'll continue with the search warrant. Once we've completed it, we'll reassess, hopefully locate him and arrest him. Coming up, Seamus and the team get their man. This one. At an early morning RBT... Both Greek painters, I think, on their way to work. A bodgy DIY job... Check out his front number plate. It's wooden. ...has the cops scratching their heads. Wood. I've never seen anything like it. Uh, not OK. Not OK. Not like that. You need to take that off. So that in itself, along with the old plates, sort of rings alarm bells. And if the plates sort of ring alarm bells, they ring even louder when the cops see beer cans everywhere and smell the driver's breath. You might be all right, you may not be, because I can smell alcohol. That's good. I can still smell it, yeah. Hold it, big deep breath, and blow till I say stop. Blow, 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 keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, and stop. Thank you. If you're on a learner's license, it means you've got to be on zero. So your 0.43 shouldn't be that. It's almost 0.05. This chap, yeah, unfortunately, he'd had a bit of a night out last night. Finished at midnight, coming to work this morning. He's, he reeks of alcohol, and unfortunately, he's, he's blown over. Okay, George, you're all good. And looks like the homemade number plate wasn't the only bad decision. You've got a license, a full driver's license. How come you're not driving? Why, why aren't you driving? Good question. Have you been drinking? No answer. We've got a learner driver with alcohol in their system driving an unroadworthy car. The driver is charged and his car defected with a long list of repairs. Look, I'm, I'm all for doing it yourself, but um, when it comes to number plate on cars, it's no go, unfortunately. Yeah, you can't make your own number plate. It's got to be one from NBR. I appreciate you trying, but unfortunately you can't do that. All right, let's go. Seamus and the team are hot on the heels of a car thief. We're looking for Frank. And now they think he's hiding out at his mum's place. So we're at uh, Ingram's parents' place. We're going to have a chat with them and see if they know where he's been staying at since he moved out of his ex-girlfriend's place. Hello. Sorry to bother you. Police. Hey, um, you're Frank's mum, is that right? Yeah. Yeah. We're looking to catch up with him. Is he here? No, he stays at Parkinson's. Very keen to catch up with him. Yeah, so... Hopefully I get to do it in the next couple of days. 107, mobile clear. As they head out, finally the breakthrough they've been waiting for. Hang on, I've got to call you back. I've got to call you back. Frank has been spotted in a nearby suburb. I knew it. Good work. Magdalene, Magdalene, go straight down. Yeah. 3041. Ray, give me a better location. This way. Through here. Boom. Got our boy. Tony's just done the bolt from a stolen car. The boys have chased him over a couple of fences and arrested him. Frank is finally under arrest. How's it going, Frank? You're busy, man. We've been looking for you for a while. 
And with yet another stolen car in his possession, Frank's not having one of his better days. Whose car's that? I got it off a of friend. Yeah. Is it stolen? I don't know. Oh, what the f man. Yeah, happy days. I'm pretty stoked about it. We've been in and out of the car all day, sweating it up every single time we get out of the car. So it's a good result. It means I can go in the aircon and have a beer. Which is what Frank won't be doing as he's spending the next six weeks in the slammer. Mikhail, the thirsty painter, was fined 500 bucks and disqualified from driving for three months. And as for the case of the flying shoe in the kebab shop, despite the carry-on, no complaints were made. Next time on Territory Cops. Bearing it all for the law. A wild leap stops a thief. Right, oh, that's wrong. But leads to a Darwin dealer. Oh, mate, you're under arrest. Being decent behaviour. And Mitchell Street's greatest actor tries his luck. Oh.